With the U.S. and Canadian border drawing near, we found ourselves in the coastal rainforest of Washington. After spending over a year in the arid landscapes of the American Southwest, the moss-covered rainforest felt completely foreign to us. Hungry to immerse ourselves in this new terrain, we scoured Onyx backcountry for a trail that would do just that. Eventually, we found the third beach trail that would take us south to Strawberry Point. We acquired our overnight permits from the National Park Service, downloaded our maps offline using Onyx Backcountry, and got to work packing. The following morning, we pointed ourselves towards the trailhead to begin our coastal trek. These guys coming. For the first mile of our trail, we couldn't help but be in complete awe of how alive everything was. This place is a stark contrast to the desert flora and fauna that we've grown accustomed to. Everything was the most overwhelming color of green. Eventually, we broke out of the forest and onto the beach. From here, our map indicated that we would be weaving on and off the beach for the rest of the hike. The interesting thing about this trail is that it had to be timed in conjunction with the ebb and flow of the tides. Some sections of the beach are so narrow that it renders them impassable during high tide. Even when we stopped to admire the wildlife, we had to keep a close eye on the time, the tide charts, and the map. This ensured that we were giving ourselves enough time to make it to our final destination without having to wait for the tidal waters to recede. At the end of Third Beach, the trail turned into the headlands and up we climbed. And climbed. And climbed some more. This is the kind of hiking that we love. When the terrain is varied, it keeps our minds focused and present only to what immediately is in front of us. Periodically, we checked back in with Onyx to be sure that we were making good progress as the tide marched ever higher. So yeah, it looks like the trail continues inland a bit more before we get onto that beach. Okay. So yeah, I think we're good.
After making our way back onto the beach, we gained a clear view of the beautiful sea stacks that this area is known for. Sea stacks are large rock formations in the ocean that are separated from the main shoreline. They're formed over millions of years from erosion that separates the rock from the surrounding headlands, leaving them completely stranded. Often, sea stacks are topped by the same foliage as the once connected forests. This was the first of two sections that can be impassable during high tide. It was a relief to get there and find the rocks fully exposed to allow for our passage. Feeling less pressed for time, we found a lovely little spot to settle in and enjoy a leisurely lunch. Off in the distance, a steady rotation of eagles were competing for a bite to eat out on the nearby sea stack. Unable to peel our eyes off of the flurry of activity, we had lunch and a show. Who knew that the action would be over here? We just passed Scott's campground. Now we're out at this point, and then we're camping at Strawberry Point, this little area here. So we don't have too far to go. We were happy to realize that we were closer to camp than we thought, because the stretch of beach also happened to be the final section that can be impassable during high tide. Having found the perfect spot on the beach, we set about making camp and settled into our home for the night. Look at this talon. That's what cuts me in my sleep right there. This is our favorite part of spending time in the backcountry, sitting back and enjoying the view that we worked so hard to see. It's satisfying because we knew the time, planning, and preparation it took to get us here. After a short rest, we decided to venture out to explore the local sea stack and tidal pools. While Owen and I were sitting on an outcropping of rock, we spotted a seal and her pup out in the water. Eventually, they grew comfortable with our presence and moved in a little bit closer. Before we knew it, the curious pup was just a few feet away. When we got a closer look, we realized that this pup was so young, it still had its umbilical cord attached and it was legitimately kind of bad at swimming. Not wanting to create any unnecessary stress for the mother or her newborn, we left to give them some space. But wow, did we feel lucky to spend a few minutes with those cuties. Not ready to head back to camp, we ventured to the other side of the sea stack to continue our explorations.
As the tide began to come in, we quickly started to lose ground and decided to make our way home for dinner. It's good. It's more stew. I guess like I just see shepherd's potatoes and I just like assume it's a pie. It's more stewy than I thought it would be, but it's good. It's supposed to be that stream. Please tell me there's cheese in here. Shredded cheese. Basking in the glow of a full belly and a beautiful view, we sat back and enjoyed the changing light on the seascape. We've come to love observing the places that we visit in all times of day. Allowing ourselves enough time to linger so that we can experience a full day in one place has become a priority. We do this so we can see the way that the light changes on the scenery. It's our way of getting to know a place. In the morning, we woke up to a dense, fast-moving fog, transforming our view once again into something completely new. The only thing that could make our morning view any better would be enjoying it with a cup of coffee. The night before, Owen went out in search of a fresh water source. The water was rich in tannins, giving it its light brown color. Wow, well, look at that. Oh yeah. After filtering the water, it was safe to drink despite the questionable color. At some point during breakfast, the fog started to thin as the sun crept higher in the sky. It wasn't until nearly 10 a.m. that the sun broke over the tree line to start warming our little corner of the beach. And Hopefully it would dry out our tent before we had to pack it. Mom and baby! We're never ready to leave a place like this. However, with the tidal shift coming, we set off down the beach pointed north. With a limited window before high tide, we checked to see how much ground we needed to cover to get to our last impassable point on the hike before the tide came in. Thankfully, Onyx has a handy line distance feature that allows us to draw a line to estimate the distance to that point. One mile. We spotted a trail that cut inland and immediately were confronted by a pile of trash that had been hauled in from the ocean and the beach over time. It was jarring to see after enjoying so much pristine beauty since hitting the trail. One part of us was happy that it wasn't in the water anymore, but the other part felt helpless realizing that we were miles away from the nearest place to dispose of any of this. It was a hard reminder of the effects that we have on the natural world. 
With all of our open pockets stuffed with trash, we pushed further down the trail. The hardest parts of the trail were behind us, and we no longer felt pressed for time, so we sat down to enjoy our last meal on the Olympic coast. After lunch, we started our final stretch of hiking on Third Beach, and we stopped to see a few oddities along the way. The final stretch of our backpacking trips always feel like a victory lap. There's nothing better than going out into the backcountry with little to no service. But when we come to places like this, it's important to come prepared with all the tools that we need to make it to and from our destination safely. Especially when we're working with time constraints due to tides like we did on this hike to Strawberry Point. Having maps downloaded offline, the line distance tool, and tracking through Onyx backcountry took all the guesswork out of our trip. Another successful trip is in the books. All right, Onyx, where to next? It's all in the knees. Yes! So good. <laughs> yes.